So this is our first webinar on uh, focusing on a very interesting uh, uh, topic and action that we need to do. We um, believe that uh, EU and India, there is a lot of expertise uh, on both sides, in both continents, and uh, we wanted to create a virtual platform uh, by which we could exchange information on EU strengths, India's strengths, and create a virtual environment for innovation. So we would be organizing a series of such programs which will promote innovation across borders via this virtual platform. And to kickstart, in fact, uh, we are featuring one of our close and active partners, Coventry University Enterprises. Um, you know, interestingly, uh, the uh, European Technology Experience Center platform has been uh, co-developed by Coventry University Enterprises and EBTC. It's been a project we began discussing in 2012 and we have been working the last two years to bring it online and to make it a reality for India and Europe to experience in, uh, each other without having to travel across borders. So in fact, e-tech, as we call it, is itself a, in itself a living lab. Uh, we, we believe that business researchers, uh, uh, SMEs, um, uh, institutions can actually interact across borders and create new innovations. This program every month, uh, which will feature different organizations from Europe and India, will be followed in the same month by a very interesting program called the uh, TOPS, uh, which may mean uh, an opportunity and an online platform for European technologies to pitch and Indian uh, organizations that are seeking European technologies to pitch. This will eventually lead to an investor forum that will take place by the end of the year where collaborations and deals that EBTC brings together can be showcased on an investor platform. Interestingly, going back now to Coventry University, uh, this, that we're going to spend the next 45 minutes uh, you know, uh, sharing Coventry University's expertise. But before that, a quick few words on why EBTC uh, is, is showcasing them. Uh, Coventry has, is, is, is in itself an ecosystem, is in itself a living lab where a number of uh, institutions, the students, their university education, the SMEs, the entrepreneurs are working together to create various actions in a variety of fields including water, low carbon vehicles, sustainable buildings, sustainable transport, and uh, we believe that this innovation ecosystem needs to be showcased uh, in India to look at how collaborations can take place. EBTC will be working with Coventry to bring in key actions in the areas related to water, low carbon vehicles, sustainable buildings in the next few years to share uh, opportunities in research, to provide consulting services, and to also provide opportunity for SMEs which you'll, near, uh, which you'll hear about. So feel free to uh, use this platform to learn, to use this uh, afternoon uh, uh, in, in India to learn and this morning in Europe to learn about what one can really do with Coventry University, what projects can be planned, what actions can be built. So to the Indian audience on this webinar, please be ready with your questions and queries. We'll take about three to four at the end of this webinar live. But the rest of it, uh, uh, where you have ideas for projects that you'd like to build together with Coventry and EBTC, please do send us an email to bengaluru at ebtc.eu. I repeat, bengaluru at ebtc.eu. So with these few words, I'm just going to now give the floor uh, to my uh, colleague at Coventry University Enterprises, Brian Moore. Uh, Brian, uh, I'm very excited. We're all very excited to hear from you, so over to you. Thank you very much, Lena. Uh, that's great. And a very warm welcome and afternoon to everyone in India. It's a beautiful day here in Coventry. Um, my name is Brian Moore, and I'd like to very briefly introduce you to Coventry uh, and to the city. So Coventry uh, University um, can trace its origins back to the year 1843, uh, when it was then a college of design. It then had to wait until 1970 when the College of Art and Lanchester College of Technology and Rugby College of Engineering Technology combined to form Lanchester Polytechnic. 
Manchester Polytechnic changed its name in 1987 to Coventry uh, Polytechnic. And then in 1992, it became a university through government charter, and it's been a university since then. We're very proud to say, and we are the modern university of the year, uh, as voted by the Times. So this talk is going to go through three sessions. The first session will be a very brief introduction uh, to Coventry University and the group of companies. The second session will be the meat of this um, seminar, webinar. We'll be looking at the work of the faculties, School of Art and Design, and our institutes which deliver um, industry projects. So we're focusing entirely uh, in this talk on how we deliver um, real benefit to companies, in particular SMEs. The third session will then be an introduction to how the university interacts with businesses, and that will be given by Coventry University Enterprises Limited's Managing Director. So the next slide shows where we are. Uh, Coventry is right in the centre of England. We're 95 miles northwest of London, uh, 19 miles southeast of Birmingham, and currently it takes about one hour by train to get from London to the city. But in the next 30 years or so, when we get the high-speed train, it'll be about 20 minutes. We are very close to the International Airport at Birmingham, which is only 10 miles away. So from the diagram, you can see the city center of Coventry. It's enclosed by a ring road. And the university owns about 25% of the land and the buildings within that ring road. Coventry as a city is the 10th largest in England, with a population of 320,000 people, and is at the heart of the industrial center of the country. A little bit about the university now. We have currently 24,000 students. 6,000 of those are international students from over 140 different countries. We have research ventures across the globe, and we have a lot of international business activity, which is increasing year on year. The university group consists of Coventry University on the right-hand side, which looks at the teaching and training. We have a new 2020 research strategy, which Paul will talk about later. We have a London campus, Coventry University London campus, near uh, uh, Liverpool Street Station. We have a college. And this is serviced by the, the uh, Corporate Partnership Unit, and Business Development Managers, and Business Development Support Office. There are a lot of um, spin-out companies from the university. The ones you can see are wholly owned subsidiaries. And the lead company is Coventry University Enterprises Limited, uh, with responsibility for our technology park, where we're talking from now, our conference center, uh, and companies like FutureWorks and FutureLets. The other companies going down on the left-hand side of your screen Acure Solutions deliver uh, continual professional development. CU Social Enterprises started this year to support social enterprises uh, within the uh, region. Coventry University Students Union is a separate entity, as indeed is Coventry University Services Limited, uh, which was responsible for consultancy. The last one there is Serious Games International, which is a spin-out company from the Serious Games Institute, which you will hear about later. The university, about five years ago, decided to focus very strongly on what it is good at, where it has a global lead, and it chose seven areas, the key areas where it has excellence in research, and really where it can support businesses. And as Lena said earlier, uh, this includes the aging society, digital media, low impact buildings, integrated transport and logistics, low carbon vehicles, human security, and sustainable agriculture. So I'm now going to hand over to my colleague, uh, Paul Fairburn, who's Director of Business, and he will talk about the new strategy for research at the university. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian, and a warm welcome to you all from me also. As Brian said, my name is Paul Fairburn. I'm Director of Business Development here at Coventry University. Um, before you hear more detail and case studies about um, how we interact and work with companies um, here at Coventry University, um, I'm going to give you a very brief overview of our um, research activity and also particularly our international strategy as well, just so that you get a sense or a flavor as the sort of organization we are. Um, before I do that, and actually just to add to um, Brian's points about how um, we work 
with organizations and particularly large organizations, I wanted to give you an example of a recent development of a relationship with the Unipart Group. Um, as some of you may be aware, Unipart are a large manufacturing and logistics organization. Um, they have a base here in Coventry um, and we have worked with Unipart over the last 12 months um, to secure significant investment into a new manufacturing facility. So 32 million will be invested into a new purpose-built facility at the Unipart site in Coventry. Um, and this is a really exciting new venture for us. And the idea is to establish this purpose-built facility, which is effectively a base for both Unipart employees and also undergraduate students at the university who will be studying for a new manufacturing degree. And the idea is that this is generating the next generation, uh, training the next generation of engineers and actually putting them alongside Unipart employees into the facility at Unipart, which will be a replica production cell, means that they'll be getting real life experiences in a manufacturing environment, working closely with Unipart colleagues, preparing them for the world of work. So this is a really exciting venture for us, which you should look out for in the future. We're due to be opening the new facility in September 2014, which is when the new intake of students will be here. So moving on um, and just taking a very broad overview of the research strategy, as Brian mentioned um, very briefly in his opening comments, um, we have been extremely successful as a university organization um, in collaborating and working with our industry partners and clients. And you'll hear more about that in the rest of this presentation. What I wanted to do now is just to look forward um, to 2020, and we are um, in the process at the moment of implementing our new 2020 <coughs> research strategy. For us, this is a significant step um, to build on our reputation to date as the modern university of the year. And we are investing over 100 million sterling into new research staff, into buildings, into equipment over the next three to five years. And what we are proposing to do is to continue and develop the focus on um, applied research, as we call it, or working with industry, to develop some very specific centers of high quality research. And you'll see on the slide here, um, we've called it excellence with impact. And by impact, I mean our research, as we see it, will have a significant impact either on the global economy, on society. We want to become internationally renowned in some very specific areas and obviously make a significant difference to the way citizens live. So just to give you an idea um, of the areas where we are um, already investing, um, we have three new uh, research centers which have been launched in the last month. The three that you see on the slide uh, here are agroecology, which I'll come back to shortly, um, but the other two are trust, peace and social relations and psychology, behavior and achievement. The trust Peace and Social Relations Research Center is really about working with communities across the globe and organizations uh, to strengthen human security and resilience. And our researchers are often working with communities in uh, post-conflict zones or following natural disasters, helping communities rebuild and restructure. The Psychology Research Center is at the opposite end of the spectrum, almost in developing new psychological interventions in certain areas where we have critical expertise. One is in child education and development. Another is in violence and um, interpersonal aggression. And our researchers there are, are working with support agencies, um, a healthcare services, helping to develop new interventions to support um, people suffering in those areas. The one research center that I wanted to draw attention to um, was our agroecology water and resilience and we'll all be very aware um, food and water security is increasingly threatened we have issues such as climate change biodiversity uh, conflict and just volatility of, of market prices which having a real impact on the security of supply um, and what our researchers are proposing to do in this area um, coming in from both a life science and um, a social science perspective is to look at applying new knowledge, policies, technologies to develop resilient systems and protect the future health of food and water supplies. So finally, just moving on, um, I wanted to give you a snapshot just to continue what Brian said about our international activity. 
We are the largest recruiter of overseas students uh, in the UK across all modern universities, around 6,000 as Brian said last year. And perhaps more importantly from an international experience point of view, we are uh, sending more students overseas for an overseas experience during their study here uh, at College University. Um, the London campus is just worth a very quick mention, um, established to attract students uh, on high profile postgraduate degree programs um, so that we can locate uh, training delivery in both Coventry and London. Looking forward, we are obviously looking to build on that market position and grow our student recruitment into the UK, um, but also of potential interest to the audience here, we want to increase our growth and profile in a number of overseas markets, um, looking at not just education, but also research, training and consultancy. And I think importantly for us is, is to develop alongside that the, the capability and the capacity lines our staff internally within the university to deliver international business, working with colleagues across the globe. And I just wanted to close with one example um, of how we are currently working with a global organization, Infosys, you will be very familiar with. Um, we've worked with them over the last three years to design and develop a, a suite of bespoke um, postgraduate programs. Um, so you see the programs listed here. The, the, the aim and the intention is to help Infosys build and manage their talent internally within the company. This has been a very successful venture and we are looking at, uh, well actually the graduates are now through and qualified at an award ceremony in March of last year uh, and that was completed successfully. So um, that concludes uh, my overview and uh, sort of opening slot here. I'd very much like to hand on to my colleague now, Adrian who will talk to you about a case study in relation to the Faculty of Engineering and Computing. Hello, my name is Adrian Duckworth, I'm part of the business development team here at the university and I just want to give you a brief overview of the Faculty of Engineering and Computing. You can see in the, the picture there, which is a photograph of the new £55 million pound engineering and computing building which is a state-of-the-art building which opened in September 2012. This hosts the core of the Faculty of the Engineering Computing. Within that faculty are 300 academic staff, 3,500 undergraduate students, 800 postgraduate students and doing an undertaking of a mixture of MSCs and MBAs and 150 research students undertaking PhDs, MPhils and MSCs. Within the Faculty of Engineering, there are five key departments. Those are Aviation and Aerospace, Electrical and Electronic Engineering, Mechanical, Automotive and Manufacturing Engineering, Civil Engineering, Architecture and Building, Computing, Mathematics and Physics. And within the faculty, we undertake uh, research, industrial collaboration and teaching within 11 strategic key areas. And those are statistical mathematics, fluid dynamics, control engineering, humanitarian engineering, human systems integration, low impact buildings, computing, dimensional metrology, wireless sensing, and engineering systems, and I believe Paul's already covered the work we're doing with UniPass and the Manufacturing Institute. Supporting the faculty are two teams, first of all the enterprise commercial team, uh, which undertake a lot of our training and development courses, and as well as our marketing. They're also uh, responsible for employed, employability and graduate placements. Additional, we have the business development group, which I'm part of, and we support uh, research contract development, as well as pre-contract awards and project management. As I mentioned, it's a brand new 55 million pound engineering computing building. Within that building, we've got a number of key facilities. I'm not going to go through all of those today, but I'll just touch upon a few of them. Uh, for example, we have a wind and smoke tunnel. We've got a metrology laboratory. We've got metal workshops. We have lathes, CNC machinery rapid prototyping and laser cutters, we've got an ethical hacking laboratory, uh, we've got aerospace simul simulation center, um, we also have a Merlin flight suite and a Harrier jump jet that's actually based inside the building. Over the years, the faculty have worked with a number of organizations on a mixture of industrial collaboration and teaching, and these are uh, companies such as Impasys, Tata, Tata Steel, Kinetic, uh, the National Physical Laboratory, uh, Vinci, Jaguar Land Rover, uh, BAA Systems, for just to name but a few. But however, there's one in particular I want to cover today in the short case study, and that is Orbit Housing and the Orbit Group. Now, Orbit 
housing are part of the Orbit Group, which is one of the UK's largest housing associations. Orbit Group manages 36,000 homes of families, couples, single and older people. The company employs over 1,500 people. Now the university has, and the faculty has a substantial relationship with Orbit and has in the past worked on a number of projects such as a £750,000 research council project to develop smart meter technology for energy management. We've also worked on a number of graduate placement projects looking at developing training toolkits for working with tenants. The example I want to go through today is um, a case to be looking at wireless sensor technology. Cogent computing, uh, sorry, Orbit approached the university to help with the evaluation of a number of energy saving and low carbon products it was looking to install in its housing stock. The reason being Orbit was interested in taking its own evaluation uh, because often there's a gap between what manufacturers claim to be achieved or the actual performance of these types of low carbon products. Therefore, they wanted, to, uh, they wanted to develop a robust measurement system and statistical evidence in order to understand how effective some of these low carbon technologies it was looking to install in its housing stock were. In addition, Orbit was also interested in evaluating how its tenants interacted with these technologies because the technology is too complicated to use, um, then the, the potential energy savings from these products are not going to be fully realized. To help solve this problem, uh, Orbit worked with the faculty's uh, research team, Cogent Computing, and we installed a wireless sensor network throughout the test homes to collect data on carbon saving from each of the technologies being tested. Cogent would then be able to use this information to inform Orbit which technology should be installing into its housing stock so it can have the greatest impact on lowering the carbon footprint of its housing. Additionally, Cogent would be able to use the information to evaluate how tenants were using the technologies and working with Orbit, we were able to put in place tenant empowerment initiatives to support appropriate engagement with these new technologies and further reduce the carbon footprint. It's very, very enjoyed speaking to you today. I'm now going to pass you on to my colleague, uh, Carly Rimmer, who's going to give you some information on the business and environment faculty. Thank you, Adrian. Good morning, everyone. My name is Carly Rimmer, and I'm a business development manager here at the university. Um, I'm going to give you an introduction to our faculty of business, environment, and society. We refer to um, this faculty as BES, so I'll, I'll talk, um, refer to BES throughout my presentation. Okay, quick overview. Um, we're a very large faculty within the university with over 7,000 students on undergraduate and postgraduate courses. Many of those students are international and we support those students with over 400 staff covering a very wide range of academic subject areas um, from the social sciences and business disciplines. The key theme of the faculty and that runs throughout everything that we do is based on developing sustainable societies, communities, organizations and behaviors. Just to give you an idea of the type of organization that we work with, and this is just sort of to mention a few, um, we have relationships with some major national and international organizations such as Jaguar Land Rover, Ford, Nokia and a number of government agencies. Indeed, we also work with a number of local companies here in Coventry and in the region. Within the Faculty of BEZ, there are nine departments. Um, I've listed those on the screen here, but they essentially are made up of um, the business disciplines, for example, marketing and advertising, economics, finance and accounting, running into the social sciences, for example, our Department of International Studies and Social Science, going through to geography and disaster management and English and languages. The research and collaboration that we undertake with industry um, runs throughout all of these departments and our academics are then organized into various teams to undertake the research and just to give you an example um, of, two of two of the research centers that, which Paul mentioned earlier in his presentation, uh, we have the Center for Trust, Peace and Social Relations and the Centre for Agroecology, Water and Resilience. So a number of our staff that operate within the departments come together under those research groupings to undertake their research and work together with business. 
to give you an example of a project um, that is actually uh, run within um, BEZ and also together working together with engineering and computing, um, we have worked closely with a company called WB Timber. And they are a, a local SME and they came to us um, to look for support to help them design and develop and test um, a new product that they were looking to develop, which was a, um, an eco-friendly um, garden building, um, a very nice looking uh, building that you can actually have within your, your home garden that can be used for a, sort of a range of activities. Um, and essentially we worked together with them um, to help them design and develop and launch this product as a, as a new um, line of business for them. And we undertook this, the form of engagement that we undertook um, to help this was a KEEN project which stands for Knowledge Exchange and Enterprise Network. This is essentially a knowledge transfer project where we bring together the company the relevant academic expertise and graduate support um, over a period of time, um, six to 12 months, to actually work with the business and help them achieve um, and solve their problem. We've undertaken that work and the product has since been launched and it has now gone on to secure European design registration and has won a number of Eco Innovation Awards. So our, our customer is indeed extremely uh, happy and we have an ongoing relationship with that customer moving forward and we're looking at sort of other areas of work with them. Just to give you an example to show this, um, show some recent press activity in early May that the two graduates that worked on this particular project have now actually been recruited to join the firm and they've gone over there to, to work with them. So really, really excellent outcome um, for everyone involved. I hope that gives you a, a flavour of what we do within um, BEZ and look forward to any questions at the end. I'm now going to hand over to my colleague Kevin Vincent who's going to introduce the School of Art and Design to you. Many thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Carly. Uh, as Carly said, my name is Kevin Vincent. I'm the Business Development Manager for the School of Art and Design. Uh, as Brian uh, indicated at the beginning of this presentation, the school, uh, the university has its roots in the School of Art and Design. And as such, we have over 150 years experience in um, fine art, design, uh, artisan crafts, uh, with a very focused uh, and close relationship with local business and also international business. Um, originally, we started in fabric and textiles and jewelry, and as uh, industry grew in the area, we moved into automotive and uh, transport design, industrial design, and product design, and have recently included uh, School of Fashion and um, also spinning out companies from, from the school in the area of uh, workwear and um, health and safety wear. So we um, have a very high reputation within the UK. We are a top 20 school in um, art, art and design and are part of the university's research excellence framework submission. And we pride ourselves on having alumni within uh, fine art, with, for example, uh, the Queen's Portrait Painter. We have uh, alumni who have won Oscars for animated short films, um, including the writers of, uh, and producers of X Factor and Big Brother here in the UK. So, and that is um, broadly based around the arts and media section of the school. From when we move into industrial design, we have a very long reputation, in fact, since 1974, with automotive industrial design and transport industrial design. The uh, designers of most of the top styling studios around the world include Coventry graduates and very senior positions, including Aston Martin, Jaguar Land Rover, Lotus, and BMW. And I, I can also add uh, SEAT and uh, also um, General Motors in there. 
the school has won the prestigious Queen's Award for Further and Higher Education Excellence for our um, Center of Automotive and Product Design Research Group, and also the Samisha Black Award for Excellence in Education, awarded jointly by the Royal Design Society for Industry and the Royal Academy of Engineering. I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, as Lena said earlier, about um, integrated transport uh, and sustainable transport. This is a, a key area of research in the school. It's focused on overcoming hurdles in transport accessibility, providing sustainable transport solutions, and as such has uh, six key thematic areas which we study. Um, to do this, we have to be very collaborative, and we work closely with other faculties within the university. So our focus in the school is on a user-centered design uh, imperative that deals with public transport design, vehicle design, transport infrastructure, and the passenger experience. When we get to the passenger experience, we have uh, strong relationships with uh, health and life science. and the Health Design Technology Institute, as well as um, engineering and computing, uh, to bring in expertise in psychology, physiology, uh, and human factors and human machine interaction into our research. We also deal with intelligent transport systems and logistics, particularly through vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications, which again um, pulls in expertise from engineering and computing. The, our links to the business school in BES uh, are evidence through our work in socioeconomic socio studies, uh, which include traffic infrastructure and integration of low carbon vehicles uh, and uh, public acceptance and uptake. Just to talk a little bit about a particular case study, uh, this is a integrated transport and logistics European Commission funded framework 7 project called METPEX. This uh, 2.7 million euro three year project is now currently halfway through delivery and is focused on determining the quality of passenger experience. So our aim is to produce a measurement tool that will inform operators across uh, Europe and also cities and municipalities, how they can improve their customer service to overcome barriers to public acceptance of public transport and reduce the hurdles um, between different modes. So for example, if you go from uh, cycle or bus into train or, or air station, um, the research is focused on participatory evidence to get feedback from customers that will inform the development of uh, this tool. And we are currently working across eight partner cities with 16, 16 partners across the UK. Um, and that is due to finish next year. That um, A lot of this work here is actually supported by the school's profile in that we are currently sitting on the working group for our local transport authorities as well as the working group for the European Regions Innovation Network on Transport and we are also a special advisor to the UK Houses of Parliament All-Party Transport Select Committee. Uh, that concludes Art and Design. Uh, thank you very much for listening. I'll pass over to Dina Shah for HRTI. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, namaste, Kemcho um, and Sasika. My name is Dina Shah, uh, and I'm going to be giving you a presentation about health, the Health and Lifestyle Faculty, and also about the Health Design Technology Institute. So I'll start by coming to the uh, the title of this um, webinar. It's about innovation through, through EU India knowledge sharing. And that's really what I'm going to focus on in my presentation today. Um, so across the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences and the Health 
and Desi Design and Technology Institute. We focus on knowledge sharing, knowledge transfer to our students, of course, but then also in partnership with industry and SMEs to create new innovations, to support workforce development and education um, and skills development within the workplace, and to create research and development um, that informs business. Um, so um, let, let me just take you through my uh, slides. I'll first start by talking about the Health Design and Technology Institute. Um, Lena, in her introduction, talked about living labs. Well, the Health Design Technology Institute is a living lab. Um, the philosophy behind it is that it, creates, it, it provides specialist support to businesses through a combination of research, consultancy to support innovation, and workforce development, education, and study. And each of these things work in partnership with one another. The, the Health Design Technology Institute is focused on the market of promoting the self-management of health, well-being, and independent living in a community setting. That means that it's not about the acute care within a hospital, but it is about um, supporting people to live independently at home for longer. The whole ethos of the, the Institute is about using a user-led innovation approach to businesses. So we work with users and carers at the very heart of everything we do. We try to understand what their needs are and we use those to inform innovation. We work with a multidisciplinary group, so we work with businesses, SMEs, and not just businesses and SMEs, but also people that may have a new idea for an invention, so innovative that may not be a business, um, a large business or an SME. We put them into contact with clinicians and health and social care practitioners, um, and then academics. And we work together with all of those disciplines to support the design of new products, services, and interventions that can support independent living. Um, we, we undertake different types of knowledge transfer. So in terms of for research, um, this is a case study example that I put up on the screen. So we worked with a, uh, a large energy provider here within the United Kingdom to develop a new service um, uh, to support independent living. So it's a consumer-based service. Um, we worked with, with consumers um, and end users to understand what are their needs um, around keeping families connected. So, so this particular example, it's called Warm Neighborhoods, is, is about um, older people living on their own and then maybe their families and loved ones live further away and so they can't come in and see them every day. So we developed a, a, a technology and a service solution that can help um, people to, to look after their, their older parents from a distance. Um, and that, that service is being commercialized and will be going national um, over the next year. Uh, and it's already been piloted uh, at, with great success. Okay, so the next part of my presentation is about the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences. Um, again, uh, um, Knowledge transfer is really ingrained and embe embedded in activities across the university and in fact in the structures that we operate within. Within the Health and Life Sciences um, faculty, we've got nursing, midwifery and healthcare practice, social care, psychology and behavioral studies, and then we've got applied sciences. 
which is more of your hard science. So, so when we look at the types of knowledge transfer products, services that can be delivered, on the one side we've got hard science. So for example, uh, we've got a group of researchers who have developed um, a, little, a little capsule which contains um, radiotherapy. Um, and that, that capsule, capsule is moved, uh, it is used to treat specific types of cancer. So it, you can move it within your body, and when it gets to the right point near a tumor, you can use technology to burst that capsule so you get a very localized and contained um, radiotherapy, which, which really improves its efficiency. And in that, we um, work with NHS clinicians and businesses to, to support that deliverable. And then on the other side, um, we've got a lot of health and well-being interventions, um, which are more about social care, developing service pathways, um, and interventions that can support people, so new services um, that can be commercialized. We also have the training that would support the uptake of all of this in terms of education. With that, I will now hand over to um, Brian Moore, who's going to talk to you about uh, the Serious Games Institute. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dina. That was, uh, that was great. So this is the, the last presentation that looks at the faculties institutes of the university and this is the Serious Games Institute. So your virtual technology center, which is in Bangalore, was built and powered by Serious Games Institute. The idea of Serious Games is to take the uh, entertainment world and to make it more applicable to business in terms of setting up things like training and education through Serious Gaming and also um, sales and marketing for businesses. The beauty of using gaming is that the knowledge which people gather from this kind of learning is 80% more effective than if you teach through a, a classroom environment. So the ingrained knowledge is there because you're using something which is more exciting and more applicable. So Serious Games Institute is located in Coventry because of the proximity to the um, second largest and most active games cluster outside London uh, in the United Kingdom. So the SGI has attracted attention and interest from uh, all over the world, both universities and companies, because it was uh, leading the field. It was breaking new ground. And since we started, there's a serious games association in Singapore, a joint venture with Northwest University in South Africa, uh, and a serious games incubator located in Veracruz University in Southeast Mexico, and a simulation and game center at the George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia, USA. So the idea really is to have in the Serious Games Institute um, a halfway house between the academic rigor and the products which come out at some service business. There are development teams working on mobile devices, 3D and visualization. We offer business incubation and support, uh, applied research team working on projects, and mainly show training, education, and showcasing. We work with most of the large uh, companies as you can see. Um, I'll go to a specific example before I finish. And this is a case study looking at health and safety. One of our leading aerospace companies wanted to make sure their staff were trained properly in the use of personal protective equipment called PPE. And they wanted to do this in a safe environment. So if you make a mistake, you don't blow up the plant. And this shows on the right-hand screen exactly how it was done. This has been a very successful project. has led to many others. I know we're very short of time, but all I'll do now is so thank you very much for listening. That's the end of the second session. I'm now going to hand over to um, Frank Mills, who will talk to you about Coventry University Enterprises. Thank you, Brian. Good morning. Yes, as Brian said, I'm Frank Mills. I'm Chairman and Managing Director of Coventry University Enterprises. Just to give you some background to Brian. Just to give us some background, uh, Coventry University Enterprises is the university's oldest established um, subsidiary and in fact was um, the main route for commercialization of the university's IP. It was formed as a company in 1989, but 
only really took off in 1999 when our first two of 17 buildings were opened. The principal activities are we do the delivery of funded projects on behalf of public sector partners. That represents about one third of our turnover of 14 million pounds a year. We have to exploit the company's intellectual property, which Brian's already mentioned and come back to. We have to we manage, we are responsible for managing the company's assets. We have 17 buildings on the technology park. We directly manage and operate 11 of those with the others out on lease to longer term tenants. And we support the university's applied research agenda through the establishment of the Applied Research Institute, which Brian has already mentioned as well. We generated uh, 14 million pound uh, turnover, and we're making a profit of just under a, a million pounds per year uh, before tax. Uh, we sit as part of the group, um, and which I think Brian's already took you through this slide, so I won't mention it again. The other subsidiaries all report into the university as we do. The park itself was built on uh, 25 acres of site that used to belong to Rolls-Royce engines way back in the wartime. It was derelict for some 20 years before uh, the university went into partnership with our local development agency and the local council um, to develop the site. The technology park, as I mentioned, it's the um, the facility that we do, we have 20,000 square meters of lettable space to commercial tenants, all of them in the modern IT or green industries, and we're currently 99% full. Uh, the conference and banqueting is this added value service that's run both commercially and through our tenants. It uh, generates um, probably about 1.7 million pounds a year in revenue and makes about £200,000 profit, so it's not only a useful asset, it contributes to the group very well. We have two agency services, a property management operation, which is about finding students and other people, um, flats and houses while they are both working in the area or attending university, and we run our own recruitment agency. Looking where we fit in with the university group, if we look at the top of the pyramid, Commercial consultancy and business support is very much the area of CUE. The university does applied research and teaching, but there is a slight overlap into applied research where some of the projects that we do contribute to that agenda as well. We're the home of the, a number of the institutes which you've heard about, so they're lo lo located here on the technology park. And we've talked about HDTI, which is our newest one, which Dean, uh, Dean has already given you a description of what it does. It's a £10 million investment um, and works very much in, uh, in the areas that's already been described. Serious Games Institute, again, was uh, the first institute here. Barnes told you what it does. And actually, one of uh, Serious Games International is a, our own spin-out from that company. Commercial Development Services is the area that we talk about publicly funded business support in those modern areas. Um, it's broken down into four areas, international business and technology transfer, creative enterprise, um, applied entrepreneurship and intellectual property services. Some examples of what we do, uh, the West Midlands SME International Project is a project worth almost £20 million over a five year period. It's in where we, our role is to help small businesses in the West Midlands to export. Whilst previously it's been very much across Europe, it's becoming much more active in the, the BRIC companies, so India, China, Brazil, and uh, though we haven't been into Russia, Russia yet. We work in partnership with both the Chambers um, and UKTI, which is UK Trade Investments, which I know Lena at least is very uh, familiar with. Another one is our Enterprise Europe network. It's the largest network of contact points providing information, partner and advice to UK, UK companies on EU matters. And we operate right across Europe with that particular project. We have technical, uh, Technology and Innovation Futures, which is about helping people understand, particularly small companies, understand their software needs and their IT solutions. Innovation Networks is a very long-standing project that we have. It's, it's funded and it gives out capital grants 
cost of machinery and tooling to SMEs that are in startup mode or developing into new areas. The University Enterprise Network is one of two that we're in the UK and we support growth of businesses creating and developing and implementing new business opportunities. A lot of what we do is about taking small businesses and helping them either start up or thrive. Um, Institute of Applied Entrepreneurship very much focuses on startup business, but particularly students from universities, not necessarily our own, but moving them into self-employment or, or business startup. It's there to actively promote their culture of enterprise and self-employment, and it's, it really is making quite an impact, particularly here in Coventry. And speed, which is a subset of that, is about student placements uh, for entrepreneurs in education. Some of the companies we worked with there are internationals. What it doesn't show you is some of the more distant countries we work. We've been very much involved in Dubai, in Oman, and we are, as Lena knows, in India. We have the intellectual por uh, property uh, portfolio, which uh, Brian manages, um, and we have a number of spin-outs. The, 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 Intellectual property is about helping small companies protect their IP, helping them understand it, helping them understand where it's worth protecting and helping them do it. And listed below are some of the spin-outs that uh, we've been involved with. And of course, the one that's missing up there is SGIL. So that's the end of the presentation, uh, unless there's any questions from anyone. Thank you, Frank. Thank um, you. Um, thank you, Coventry. That was Brian. Go ahead. No, I was just saying. Are there any questions that uh, all the team are still here in the room? Very happy to answer your questions. Fantastic, Brian. I was just going to say the same. So, to our audience uh, here uh, on the webinar, uh, please raise your hands or type in a question. And uh, we have the Coventry team sitting out there in Coventry and EBTC here in, uh, in, uh, in India to answer any questions you have. I think the idea is now uh, you're well exposed to uh, what, are, what are the expertise and strengths of Coventry University and it would be interesting to see the kind of ideas and comments you have on the types of projects that can be jointly developed in India or any other questions and comments. So over to the audience now. Do we see any hands getting raised? Questions? Okay, we have uh, uh, Mr. Puneet Pal Singh, Boga. Um, can you ask your question, please? You are unmuted right now. Hello, Puneet. Okay, uh, so we have it here. Uh, uh, Mr. Puneet's question uh, to, uh, uh, is why the Coventry University is not bringing new technology in Chandigarh, Mohali and other cities in Punjab? So this is a good question to the Coventry folks. Uh, maybe something that Frank could answer? <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Obviously our strengths have been back in the, the region, the way that um, public funding has been allocated traditionally it's very much on two bases, one is regional and one is international, but international has been very much focused around Europe. We're one of the founding members of the EBTC project which is about Europe being in India and that we use very much as the benchmark of what we're trying to do. The work we've done so far has been brokering SMEs uh, into relationships with, with yourselves and through other partnership organizations that you've addressed us to, but we see that as being the first stage. SGI in SGIL, uh, which is our partner company, that's very much what we're hoping they will be doing in the future. Uh, the only way I can answer it is to say, just please give us some time. <laughs> Great, Puneet, um, I, I'd like to kind of respond as well, saying that EBTC is working very closely with Coventry to make these technologies uh, available, and in fact, on the 28th of this month, you will see five of their technologies getting pitched 
uh, you know, online uh, on the same platform. So yes, we are working together to bring this not just to the north, but to any company across India. Uh, any more questions? Okay, we have one from Mr. Sulab Jain. Uh, how about strengthening the EU India exchanges that then just cost cross country exchange? I suppose EU as a whole can provide many innovative solutions, especially in the field of technology transfer and best case transfer. Uh, Sulab, you're absolutely right. Uh, the EBTC platform has been created for this. And uh, today we are presenting Coventry University, which is, uh, you know, uh, in the UK. And uh, this platform will be presenting a whole range of other EU institutions. For example, next month, the Climate Kick Network, which is a European network uh, with clean technology incubators across Europe, will be presenting a similar, uh, you know, EU India knowledge uh, sharing um, uh, webinar. So yes, we will be showcasing uh, different organizations from different parts of Europe. And the idea is to do tech, uh, technology transfer and best practice exchange. Uh, Coventry, would you like to answer that question as well? Um, I'd like to answer it. Um, so it's Lena Shah here. Um, I think one thing for us as Coventry University is that we really would like to create a stronger relationship with organizations in India and we see um, India and the UK being potentially compatible around research, uh, innovation and education and so what I would say is that if there are businesses, researchers, um, education organizations that are interested in working with us then please just send us an email or uh, pick up the phone to us, communicate with us and we'll be interested in in developing those relationships across the whole of the university, everything you've heard today. And of course, Lena, that... in the long run, you will get the Virtual Technology Transfer Centre set up with a lot of products there, so they'll be in the virtual space, so companies can then, then view them and see how they'll perform and contact the companies in the European Union who have supplied them. And the other thing to say is that we're very open to any company um, coming to us with a, a problem they've got, because we're an applied research university and we solve real life problems so that's what we respond to and be very happy to do that. Yes, One Brian, final, comment, like the final comment later from Nate Frank is that India to us is very important to the university group and uh, from CUE's perspective we see the, the project that we're managing with you, the EBTC one, is, is actually the gateway for us to open up and start doing more and more work. There. Okay, and in fact, I just want to reiterate for any uh, of the Indian participants, if there are any specific requests on specific projects that you'd like to collaborate on, uh, please drop in an email to bengaluru at ebtc.eu. So let's move on to the next question. Any more questions? Yep, and I think, you know, we're also coming towards uh, the, uh, the end since we don't see any more questions. I just want to wrap up with a few quick comments uh, based on our observations sitting here at EBTC India. Uh, this is to the audience and, as well as Coventry University. Um, very quickly, I, I do believe that uh, using European technology and Coventry's expertise, there are, I'm just going to point out three or four projects that we believe we can jointly develop. I think we can jointly develop to uh, India and Europe's benefit an integrated transport and logistics project with your School of Art and Design. Uh, I think uh, also looking at the water and food resilience research program could have interesting impact for India. Uh, the knowledge exchange and enterprise network uh, where we can create possible innovation ecosystem where students can transition to jobs via projects. I think that's uh, very, very interesting as well. So, uh, and um, I think on the best platform, looking at, you know, projects that we can um, look at measurement of carbon usage uh, in city development. So, I'm just going to kind of, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating these uh, specific projects because uh, we see a lot of opportunity uh, here at EBTC 
uh, to develop these opportunities. So uh, I think in the next um, uh, a few months and years to come, we could work together to focus on that along uh, with the audience here in India. So on that note, um, I'd like to thank everybody, um, uh, Coventry University, for their participation. Coventry, do you have any last comments? Um, no, I'll just say thank you very much indeed for giving us the opportunity to speak to you today, and we've all enjoyed it, and we really sincerely hope there will be some good collaborations that follow on from it. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much, and have a good morning in, uh, in Europe, and a good afternoon in India. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.